Your, the, your current, sorry, your current yeah. teaching English professor at York is saying what about about it? Is that Shakespeare is, is something that we should still be implementing into our classrooms and how it can be culturally relevant if you make it culturally relevant. No, yeah. no, it's not. Right? Shakespeare hip hop, please, God, no. <laughs> um, My name is Kulsum Anwar and I'm a high school English teacher. Somebody at UI texts you and, and they say this, they say, you're cute, okay? Never talk to this person again, okay? Because why? Why? What? What is wrong with this? Yes. It's missing the apostrophe R. Yes. Hey guys. I teach at Westview Centennial Secondary School in North York. Writing in grade nine. Yeah. But I don't really know if they have because they were virtual. Oh yeah. I think I just was a kid who was good at school. Um, it made me feel, because I was good at school, I would be helpful with other kids in the class, and I thought, hey, this seems easy. We should not really be judging people on the basis of their, basis of their grammar. You can still talk to that person, but come on, you know better. How many of you are guilty of the crime of York? How many of you? I'm sorry, put your hand up. Um, I went to York University's concurrent education program, and it's, it was a very competitive program to get into. Um, and I did like the program for many reasons. The biggest reason was it has a abundance of practicum experience. So we taught, um, you know, an urban education class I took, which was really important because urban education was a euphemism they used to describe learning to teach in a racialized school. Now I already knew how to teach in a racialized school because I went to a racialized school. Um, but a lot of the programs remain predominantly white. Um, so students in that program were, you know, given the opportunity to think and learn about what education looks like in a context that isn't, uh, you know, largely white. was, you know, just 100% racialized. The dominant groups were all racial minorities. And I think there was something really special about the school for that reason, um, where difference was the norm. Um, there was a safety there. Um, ironically, because there's so many uh, dangerous stereotypes sometimes about schools in low-income neighborhoods, um, but ironically, there was a lot of social safety. You, know, you could be who you are. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it was a home for me in many ways. Yeah, and I have, I say it every chance I get, but if you say you should not be teaching To Kill a Mockingbird, people flip out. But you really think that book is about black people? No. Black people are objects in that book. They don't even have a voice. You know, it's funny, in grade 12, I had a teacher who wanted us to find a novel independently that reflected our own, um, you know, cultural identity, ethnocultural heritage and identity. And this was like 1997, maybe, and I couldn't find anything. Um, you know, this was uh, you know the internet wasn't a mainstream thing at this time as well. So I was limited to you know our library and the local library. You know, it's a pretty big system. And I had to read this book called Shabanu, Daughter of the Wind, and it was about a Pakistani girl who grew up in the desert, and it was written by a white woman. And I had to read that, and I had to write an essay on it. Why do we read literature? We read literature um, to understand the human experience. That's what literature is about. Um, and how are you going to understand the human experience if all those experiences are white and all the protagonists, protagonists are white? I've never seen someone, you know, not be more interested, interested in something that they could relate to. You know, um, are, like I asked them the question, you know, if you went to the movies, would you rather see a movie about people your own age, or would you do you want to watch a movie about 50-year-olds? And of course, students are like, no, I'd rather watch a movie about people my own age, um, or have some other point of connection and interest that we share. Um, so, our experiences as, as the children of immigrants, as racialized Canadians, are are incredibly relevant, um, and I think it changes how engaged we are with what we read. And if we're more engaged with what we read, we are going to do a better job with reading and understanding and achieving.
So it's not a small thing. You know, our school teacher was scared of us. Which one did you have? Remember, remember, that, remember that, that little guy, that guy? He was like, he was like scared of us. I don't know where you went. <laughs> was he white or black? He was, he was white, white and he was so... I remember he used to like, bully him. He was a kid. Was he blonde? Yeah, no. no. He had black hair. But he was kind of... I don't want... He was very much scared. That's what we were scared of you. Yeah. First of all, wait, wait. Everybody was scared of you. No. Oh, what happened? Oh, yeah, Miss People was in your class, right? You ever had People? You don't know. No, I didn't have People. Okay, but I'm going to Oh, that was Reggie's class. Reggie's class. class. But that was, I had you for grade 12, so I must have been grade 11. Yeah, he was so scared of us. You all knew that he bullied him. Remember that? Remember you bullied him? Remember that? Remember he bullied him? Yo, he was so scared of us. Remember that? Remember you bullied him? 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 Remember you bullied because of us? It wasn't no. us, it was the class. No, no, okay. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. He, he left. Like he left. They could have just bullied us. Right? That could have been us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, 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 no. Did we like you guys? No, no, no. We never got bullied. No. Wait, 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 wait. How did you miss my child? I love this. Because no, she was gone half the time. You know how oh, Reggie was always oh, gone? Right. And she'd leave him in charge and he'd just get bullied. No, no, no. I stayed gone too. I was just looking at this guy. We used to bully him. He used to stand here like, oh, I hate him. I never come back here. The roughness of your teacher, like yeah, this kid's like he, like he let us walk all over him. That's We're true. the type that like if you <laughs> if you're disciplined enough, we'll listen to you. We'll and listen, we'll, like, yeah, we won't be rude. Listen, she, listen. she's like, if you guys are inside in four minutes, I'm dead. We're like, she Yo, scared me. We have to put our the first <laughs> uniform on <laughs> for her. Running to her class, running to her class for your uniform. That's what you guys like, you have so relaxed now. Because really? of COVID, you know, wow. I feel bad for the children. Come you feel on. bad? You know, you I, was bad trying, you know I was trying to prove it to them. I was like, no, no, I didn't used to be like this. I'm glad you're here. You see, it's true. It's true. <laughs> no, like, she's 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 like, she was like, stern. Like, closed like, the door. Everyone was scared of her, no. but like... Yeah, I got, I got, like, I loved my it. friends. She closed the door. Yeah, for the, like... the children I teach, you know, young people, teenagers, I know it's a bit cliched, but they really genuinely are the best part of the job. Um, what other job can you go in every day and laugh every day? Because students are so funny um, and fresh and creative and they're really the best part of my job. That they're why I've resisted um, some of the roles that kind of open up to you as you get older, whether it's vice principal or um, jobs in central office. I just don't want to leave the students. Why would I leave the best part of the job uh, to sit behind a desk um, and type all day? So. Um, I really do believe, I think we're all biased, but I really do believe students at this school um, are, are extra special. And maybe it's just ego because of course I went to this school. Um, so I feel very connected to them because I feel like they are me. I walked the same halls as they did and had many similar experiences. So, you know, I guess I'm just another text they can relate to. Yeah, I once asked my students about how they feel about those stigmas and they just talked about how heavy it is to go out into the world, especially as they get, these are grade 12 students, and um, as you get older and you start to venture out um, for the worlds of work and school, out of this neighborhood, out of the safety of this neighborhood, you understand um, that its name is a burden because when people always have to react to it, people always have their preconceived notions of it. And um, so whenever you answer the simple question of where you're from or where you grew up, you have to think twice, like, do I wanna have this conversation right now? Do I wanna unpack people's um, stereotypes right now? Or do I just wanna go about my day? Um, and that's, that's annoying and heavy and it shouldn't be like that. Um, but that's part of, of being from here. Conversation about these themes that are across their novels, right? right? And you know, yeah. and um, and the hard topics, right? Substance yeah. abuse, things and like that. Yeah, and the healthcare system too. I'm exactly. Sure they've gotten no, but the, the kids, the kid. I was really surprised because um, some of the kids who talked are tend to be quieter in the smaller, right. in the large group roundtables, and there's just kids who didn't talk before, and one of them was just like, "It's healthcare," and I was just uh, like, good, "That's good, great!" Good, like, good. yeah. So, nice. you know what? You lose your faith in, faith in humanity from the news and you lose it from like your neighbors and your yeah. experiences we all go through. And then, um, you know, in the classroom, it's always restored, I find. The, yeah. stu like, the students are, maybe, well, here, here they're really great. My grade 12s last semester were really good. They were so informed. But, you know, like, I feel like they're, they're leaving informed. But then those, what about those schools where, I know. 
you know what I mean, where it's predominantly white, yeah. and they don't have, to, this is not a problem for them, I know. so they don't have to deal They're with it. They're not them. having these conversations. Right. I mean, that's what I asked my student, that's what I asked yeah. Michael, right, at his school. He's like, we never had any of these conversations. Exactly. And I don't know how, because these, the pushes are coming from the top now to have these conversations, but you can just ignore them if you want to, right? Um, I feel more. Uh, I started my career at another school very similar to this one, as equally racially diverse, and um, my department head there went to teach at a very, um, you know, high income school, um, and asked me to come to come teach there um, to have that experience. And I said immediately no, because um, I just uh, I want to teach first of all where I'm needed. I want to teach where um, I feel connected. Um, so I, there's nothing wrong with teaching at schools like that. I think there's a lot of important work to be done there um, because so often those schools have students who don't have very little understanding of, um, of the inequalities in our society because they are very privileged. So people do need to do that work, but I, I don't volunteer. I do not volunteer. I'd rather be here. Um, because that's, you know, that's just where I feel at home. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Me too. Me too, yes. Because I'm not ready. Only five minutes, please. Are you good, miss? I thought, I know, but miss, I thought told me that 1225 is what I heard that too. Oh, you're what's up, Amari? Uh, no, technically you're late. I haven't done the attendance yet, but... Oh, Miss, we're not late, you know. You're supposed to like, what's up? Why are you The best moments are always those moments when the class just coalesces as a family, you know? Um, and it doesn't happen the first month. It happens, like, if, I don't know what exact moment it happens, but there's, there's these... And it, I think towards the end of the semester, it always is just stronger, so maybe I'm thinking of those moments. But um, when we become a little family and, um, you know, yeah, every year there's a little family that's created and it, it, it breaks up as well. But, uh, you know, sometimes we come together as individuals again and all of those moments are, are, really, are really something. I don't know if I'm describing them well enough. You got to be there. I'll give you an example. It's like, say you write this really nice paper it has really good ideas and um, you know really you know good analysis, okay? Um, but it has proofreading errors. The analogy I think of is like you're going to prom and you get a new dress or a new suit, you get your hair done, your nails done, but you did not shower. Right? That is what it is like. I don't even know, but that is how it feels to me when I read my students' papers with their nice ideas and their intelligent thoughts and their and their lack of proofreading, okay? That's what it feels like. Um, I want to say what, how nice it is to see your students succeed and to be passionate about something, which is why I'm doing this with no parameters, because I, it may not seem like it, but I'm actually not an attention seeker. I don't even have any social media, okay? I never had a Facebook account, um, but to have a student come back and and be doing something they care about and see a bright future, like I'll do anything to help that student, including bear my soul. <laughs> you can't use any of that, but it's true. <laughs> I give you more access than I give anybody. All right. That's, yeah. It's a wrap now. Is it a wrap? Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Anwar. No problem.